Welcome to the Sanctuary Podcast. Angel Deer is a medicine man and offers his work on sacred land through shamanic healing, energy healing, sound healing, breath work, plant medicine, and workshops and events. The Sanctuary is a community for all those who seek healing transformation, ancient wisdom, and a place to come together to create a new way of living and relating. This is the Sanctuary Podcast, and this is Angel Deer. Good morning, my brothers and my sister. What a special time to uh, connect and to meet. Um... I've been wanting to uh, to share with you what's been coming up with this uh, pandemic, this uh, coronavirus infection worldwide. As I've had a lot of you reach out um, for advice on how to best uh, handle this, not only as a human being, but as spiritual beings. So what can we do? uh to take care of ourselves and to take care of each others and uh yes i've also been reading the news and seeing what's on my timeline in social media feeling the fears uh that are spreading across the globes relayed by media that look for stories and look for things that they can talk about that can uh, resonate with us. And uh, I really feel that this is such an amazing opportunity for all of us that are on a spiritual path or that are trying to open our hearts to practice more deeply what we've been talking about, what our elders I've been telling us what nature I've been telling us. It's been hundreds of years that native communities, elders all over the world have told us about this disease that is spreading in our world, in our mind, in our bodies, which is a disease of fear, of scarcity, of separation, those illusions that we have been taught being the truth and that we are experiencing now amplified by this virus. So obviously, uh, this is a time of care, of care for self and of care for each other, of care for our planets. There's not been a more amazing opportunity in this lifetime to realize that and to put that into practice. Uh, first, we need to care for those who are uh, sick right now and those who are potentially at risk in our communities, the elderly, uh, younger people, people with uh, immunodeficient system, either because they are getting onto chemotherapy or they have another viral infection like HIV, uh, or simply people that are more weak because they have other uh, issues like heart issues or diabetes and other infections. And so my, my first thoughts really go to all of these people, and especially people that have been disempowered by the system, people that are poor, people that have been put on the side, refugees that are far from home and very often in very poor conditions of living, that don't have enough food to eat, that are already suffering uh, from the system uh, we have created. So it's important to remember that, yes, obviously, we first need to care for those people that are the weakest in our societies. And that might be also people that are in uh, next to you, your parents, your grandparents, uh, maybe a partner or a friend that is uh, going through one of these uh, these issues. So it's really important to uh, keep the big perspective. And any time something like that happens, we get so focused onto one issue that we forgot the big picture. 
And as spiritual seekers, we are always asked to take the point of view of the eagles to fly high so we can see the big picture, but we can also see the little details that matters. So let's expand our prayers as we pray every day, as we uh, do our practices, yogas, meditation, whatever your practice is. Let's expand our prayer to Zuzi needs even more than usual. That's really important. The other things I want to relay is obviously uh, to do a lot of self-care. It's very easy to be triggered by fear when fear comes around the fear of sickness and death. Uh, this is wired into our bodies. So let's honor that there is a part of us that wants to be alive, that doesn't want to die. But let's also remember there's a part of us that is fundamentally okay and fine. And that is infinite, that is immortal, that is never going to die. And that is part of the soul that lives in our heart and that has come here on this life to experience something special. And I will come back over and over again. And so let's know that in the roots of our body, in our root chakra, those fears are real, that they exist for everyone. People that are spiritual, religious, or people that don't believe in anything. This is the wiring, the core wiring of human being. And that's what connects us all together. So let's honor people that are panicking. Let's honor people that are deeply in fear and are, you know, retreating and maybe hoarding and stockpiling, you know, from toilet paper to food in their home. Uh, let's also remember it's a privilege when you can do that. Many people don't have the means or the money or the health to even be able to do that and to prepare. It's so obvious to me that uh, our society has been so promoting scarcity and individualism that when something like that happens, those wounds are even more activated. So we can see that at play right now, closing borders, of people because of a certain nationality or certain place of living and retreating into our homes. And that's the surreality of what we're experiencing right now. But we can do better. We can do better than that. And the way we can do better is by embodying and allowing ourselves to also feel centered, to remember this place inside us that is deeply alive right now, that is feeling for the world, that is feeling for the suffering, that is feeling for each other. Uh, if we are worried about our parents, our grandparents, worried about others, that's a good thing. That shows the compassion and ultimately how much we are attached to connection with each other. And it's kind of interesting that this virus come here and push us to uh, change our way of life. And I think that's one of the beautiful things of it. Not that that should be the only way we should be aware of changing our way of life, the way we consume, the way we travel, uh, the way we uh, relate to nature and take from nature. I don't think we should have waited for a viral pandemic to do that. I think the climate crisis and the degradation of the environment, uh, the e social issues in our communities and in our countries should be waking up call, should be emergency on a daily basis. But somehow we need those big things to trigger us and to shake us up and to wake us up. So as spiritual beings, as we are, uh, we are called into staying into our hearts whenever it's possible and as much that it is possible. I'm not saying not having any fears because that would not be human. It's okay to have fears, but not feeding them, just acknowledging them, realizing that they are here and sitting with them while we pray, while we meditate, while we do our yoga, where we do our sound healing, our breath work, whatever your practice is, maybe walking in nature, 
and bringing that fear in and realizing where it's coming from, this attachment to life, that fear of death, something that's very difficult to conquer, not being afraid of death, but that can happen over time if we do practice that. So we see crisis are uh, never the best moment to put in place uh, new practices or to anchor practices. If we already have a practice, it's going to be much easier, but we still have an opportunity to put practice in place, to reflect and to do that. So I wanted to give a few advice or a few, you know, uh, yeah, a few advice or based on my own path, on my own experience. The first one, I think it's really important to stay informed, but not over inform you because if information start paralyzing you, start making you feel contracted, start making you feel more anxious that it's not serving you anymore. We know what's happening. It's a global crisis. We know why there's a virus that's highly contagious. And we know what we can do about it, which is reduce social interactions, taking care of our bodies and our nervous system and our emotions, reaching out to those out there that maybe don't have the means to uh, anymore go to the supermarkets or getting their own food or getting medicine and see if we can help in our communities and holding the space for the people that are not able to hold space for themselves. So we don't need to watch the news 20 times a day to scroll about 50 articles about who has been contaminated and when there is more cases and what is happening. So if that is a stretch for you, maybe you can just check the news once a day and you make just that space for that and then you don't check anymore because there's really nothing new that we're going to learn 20 times a day by scrolling the news. So reducing the time where we put our intention just on that problem. So we have more space for many other things. One of the beautiful things about reducing social interactions is that we don't have to be locked down into a home. We can go into the woods, into nature on our own. So we don't take the risk to contaminate others or to be contaminated, but we can nourish our bodies and our nervous system. We can take the time to remember the gratitude of being alive, to witness the beauty of nature, to watch a sunrise or a sunset, to watch a beautiful sky at night and the moon, to maybe connect to trees and plants. So all of that we can do still. And I think it's very important in this time to make sure that we don't get swallowed into the spiral of terror the spiral of anxiety that the world is spining into. Because let's remember, this is what we're trying to heal. Our bodies, our nervous system are wired for connection and for caring, but they're also wired for love, for compassion, for gentleness, for slowness. All of those things that very often the world around us doesn't promote, doesn't give us a container to express. You're listening to The Sanctuary Podcast with Angel Deer. While you're listening, browse the website at www.thesanctuaryheal.com. So what if all what's happening right now is just a calling into our core center, which is to slow down, to disconnect from social media, from the news, from the world, to reconnect with our essence, to reconnect with nature, to reconnect mindfully with others, to care deeply for others. One of the symbol in one of my um, shamanic training path uh, is the symbol of the lighthouse, you know, this beautiful lighthouse on the coast that are beaming the light for those who are uh, lost in the storm. And a long time ago, one of my teacher, a Norse shaman, told me that the symbol of the shaman or the medicine person is that eye, 
the ruin that's called Isa. You know, the ruins are those little stones with symbols on them, little spirits on them. And the mystical rune for the medicine person is the eye. It's just this little bar anchored in the ground, pointing toward the sky, connecting to the mother, connected to the father. When he told me that, I saw a big lighthouse in my heart. This lighthouse that's standing still in the storm. What a more beautiful moment right now to be a lighthouse, to stand still in the storm, anchored in the ground, letting our fears be expressed and be regenerated with Mother Earth, connected to Father Sky, to the Great Spirit, to the Creator, to its wisdom, knowing that there is a big intelligence that is much bigger than whatever we can comprehend or ever understand. So let's be this lighthouse, anchored, connected, and beaming light. Being a lighthouse is not being passive and just not standing there or being disconnected from others. No, it's being connected to others, reaching out, sending our lights out, which is our love, our care, our compassionate actions. Being in the world, not of the world. And we can do that even if we are socially reducing our connections to others. We can still center ourselves. We can still reach out with message of hope and support for those who are sick or those who are afraid. And we can use that time as we beaming that light to see what are we sending in terms of messages out there? When are we afraid of anxiety? When do we fall back into nervousness, anxiety? When do we follow the world insanity? Or when do we stay centered? Centered with the fact, but also centered with wisdom. It's a difficult practice. And it's a difficult practice, not just in terms of time of crisis, but also in our daily life. Before the coronavirus, all the issues we are seeing now, we're here. Fear, separation, anger, judgment, scarcity, wanting to have more than the others. So what is this not this more beautiful time to really reconnect to that center? So yes, you know, maybe you have a lot of money on the stock market and the stock market is going down, but you're lucky if you have money on the stock market. Most people don't. Maybe the shelves in the supermarket are empty and you cannot get all what you want, but how lucky you are to listen to that video, meaning you have a computer, you have electricity, you have a home probably, you have food in your plates. How beautiful it is that you worry for maybe your parents or your grandparents or loved ones, meaning that you have parents or grandparents or loved ones that you care for or children. So yes, we have to change our habits. We have to change the way we are living. But isn't it what all the reason why we've been doing this work of spiritual growth and development? Isn't it what exactly what all the teachings from every tradition have told us? that we need to reconnect to our center, that we need to reconnect to natures, that we need to find this compassion for each other beyond countries, race, and religions, which is what exactly this virus is showing us. Nobody is immune. We're all human. All human. It doesn't matter if you're a powerful president or someone not in a position of power. It doesn't matter if you're black or white. It doesn't matter if you're Jewish, Christians, or you don't believe in any God. It doesn't matter if you live in France, in Italy, in the US, in Mexico, or in another country. We are all humans and we are experiencing this truth of that prayer that there is no others. We are all in this together. And so, yes, 
maybe this is going to go for a while, but we don't know. We don't know. Maybe there will be a vaccine. Maybe things are going to evolve differently at some point. In any ways, there's a lot of things we cannot control. Always. And in this spiritual path, we learn to accept also what we cannot control. Because that's the reality of life. We don't know how long we're going to be alive. I know that I'm in a decaying body that is dying a little bit more every day. So the big question is not when am I going to die, but what am I going to do with this life right now, in this moment? How can I be of service of my, to myself and to the others? So yes, I invite you to really look at that and take care of your bodies, making sure you're taking plants and herbs that support your immune system. There's plenty of them and plenty of articles out there. For myself, I'm taking propolis, honey, vitamin C, ginger, ashwagandha, garlic, elderberry. There's so many plants that you can take that really reinforce the immune system. But yet I know that if I stress, the cortisol in my body is going to destroy my immune system. So really the best medicine is my care of my nervous system and my emotions and my mind and watching it, pay attention to it and calming down through breathing, through meditation, through prayer. When I feel it's overactivated, refining my center every time I go off center. So yes, we need to do that care for ourselves so we can care for others. So if you are in a position of spiritual guide, teachers, educators, maybe you are in community leaders, maybe you are in a position when you have a reach to students, to people around you, you are called today. You are called. This is your time. This is my time. This is our time to really step up into our teachings. Those teachings are not to be practiced in front of our altars or on our yoga mat. Those teachings are for the world in action that lives in everyday life. They are for the way we relate to each other. They are for the way we can love, the way we can connect to each other. So let's keep our heart open. Let's keep our heart centered, calm. Let's keep nurturing our bodies. Let's take precaution so we don't put anybody endangered. If we think uh, we are sick or just for right now, taking some distance from big gathering. Yes, let's do all the good things that science is telling us. But science is only answering one part of the question. Spirituality and ancient wisdom in answer is answering to the root cause of what is happening, of why this is happening. Maybe you're going to be inspired to live differently, to consume differently, to travel differently, to care for yourself differently. You know, making sure you have a healthy body, making sure that you can be of service when the storm comes. You can be this lighthouse in the storm and beam that light. So we are cold and we need each other. We are all in this together. Always. That has never changed. Nobody is off the grid of the spirit. Nobody is off the grid of compassion, love and relating. So I'm calling you with me to embrace this opportunity, those challenges as a way to reflect, to act with heart and to remember, to remember why we are here for, to remember what this life is about, to remember what is the medicine that the world needs right now, making sure that we all embody this medicine that we all give this medicine out and that we keep working on ourselves, so we can embody this more and more every day. 
feel free to reach out if you want more details on my uh, special plan diet at the moment. Uh, if you want more details on some exercise that can help you. Uh, we have plenty of online events coming in the next few days and weeks where we're going to connect and we'll talk more about that. So I invite you to, to come uh, and check out uh, on my website, the sanctuaryheal.com. And uh, I'm sure we're going to have a beautiful time because I feel this connection are deepening at the moment. And that's such a, an amazing gift to be able to do that in this uh, time of great changes. Nice, much love to all of you. You've been listening to the Sanctuary Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Remember, we're a source of talks about spirituality, personal transformation, energy healing, shamanism, and earth-based practices. For more, visit thesanctuaryheal.com. On the website, you can find out about our events, our retreats, healing offering, our spiritual blog, and you can also register for the newsletter. Again, visit thesanctuaryheal.com. Till next time, this is the Sanctuary Podcast, and Angel Deer signing off.